Hello and welcome to my podcast, Innovation. Innovation was inspired by my previous podcast, Silence, where over the course of two years, I spoke every week with a total of 100 women from science, technology, engineering and mathematics, or STEM. I kept all of those guests anonymous so that we could talk openly and honestly about our lives and we discussed their experiences, what they've learned along their life journeys and their hopes and ideas for living fulfilling and contented lives. Because I never disclosed their identities and they were always kept safe, the conversations on silence were always so raw and transparent and we didn't just talk about being women in STEM but about everything. The topics that tended to come up are also the same topics that people ask me about after I've given a talk or the topics I discuss with my friends and family. So I thought rather than keep these topics under wraps with very close people, how about throwing it out there into the world and seeing what other people think about these very um, private kind of themes, I guess. So what I've done is I've sifted through all those past episodes of Silence to bring you my favourite sound bites on these certain topics. And each week on Innovation, I'll be reflecting on the perspectives that came up on Silence that I feel are actually pearls of wisdom to be shared that I found particularly provoking, inspiring and empowering. And I hope that they resonate with you too. This week is all about breathing. So the reason why I wanted to talk about breathing is because I was listening to a podcast by Brené Brown the other day and she was talking about um, breathing and how calm people are breathers. And then she did an impression of calm people and um, it was something along the lines of, you know, tell a calm person that their house is burning down and they'll kind of take a big deep breath and not say anything, maybe they might say, okay. And then they'll breathe again and they'll be processing in a really calm way. And I just found that so inspiring because it's true. When I'm not calm, my breathing becomes really erratic and short and my heart is racing and I'm like, in a panic and I can feel myself on the inside becoming really sort of flustered and anxious and I'm really on edge and even my voice changes and there's like a bunch of things that happen when I'm not calm and so when Brené Brown who's the lady that did that talk TEDx talk on vulnerability which went completely and utterly viral and now she's meeting amazing people like Oprah and she herself is an amazing woman Uh, she's one of my heroes and um, when she was talking about what calm people do I was like I really need to take these techniques on board and try and get calm myself Um, it wasn't actually on her podcast I think it was a conversation between her and Oprah actually so if you want to search for it on YouTube you'll find it there and Yeah, so I just really wanted to talk about breathing um, because, you know, it's such a simple technique, but it's something that I always forget to do when I'm in a total panic. And um, so I wanted to talk about it because hopefully it might help me to breathe more. And uh, I don't know, it, it might help you to try and remain calm and cool and chilled if you're in... A moment of panic or someone's making you feel anxious or you're getting all worried and fearful over something and um, I don't know about you but I certainly get quite emotionally unmanageable when I am stressed about something and um, breathing in my experience has really helped me and um, you know in meditation we focus on the breath and uh, there are various breathing techniques which I think are really um, really wonderful and it's funny because for quite some time I used to think that this was all sort of like pie in the sky like very just a bit woo woo maybe a bit hippie but actually going back to something as basic as looking at the way you breathe I think is a really really powerful tool So I've gone through all the episodes on silence to see which women 
talked about their breathing and um, wanted to see what kind of perspectives came up. And this first quote is from episode number 30, where my guest was actually talking a lot about her anxiety um, because she had a tick which um, caused her to hiccup. And as a re- result of hiccuping, like her breathing got really bad and it made her really, really stressed out and anxious. And it all just got so, so uncomfortable and terrible for her that she had to go and see a doctor about it. And that was really where her passion for studying, I think, neuroscience started because the doctor was so helpful and so interesting and so fascinating and so understanding and really listened to this tick that she had and really tried to help her with it that she decided that she wanted to spend her STEM career studying neuroscience. So this from episode 30. Uh, I was in high school where most people start exploring their passions and interests. Um, and I had this condition where I couldn't stop hiccuping. Okay. And it was to the point where it was so invasive that sometimes I couldn't breathe. Wow. And I went to all kinds of doctors. I went to basically any expert you can think of. I went to it. Mm. And eventually I ended up going to a pediatric neurologist who explained to me that I had a form of a tick that was a combination of both a verbal and a nonverbal tick. So my diaphragm was spasming. Uh, Most people, when they get a tick, their eyes wink or their shoulders shrug, especially if they develop them in high school. It's some kind of of physical tick. It's something that you might see on, uh, I don't know, pick a nerdy character from an 80s movie and you've probably seen a tick. Right. (laughs) Gosh. So that, that doctor was so talented and so patient and so willing to understand what I was going through and so willing to explain what he knew about what I was going through, that it really instilled a passion in me. So it's amazing that, you know, my guest really turned something that was uncomfortable and awful into an opportunity and a passion and an interest. And, you know, something as basic as getting stressed out and finding the antidote which is to allow yourself to breathe can lead to some really powerful things I mean I often feel so empowered when I meditate and when I just focus on the breath because I think what alters my breathing is my thoughts, you know, my head can really stress me out. You know, my head can tell me that the decisions I'm making are terrible. Um, I'm making mistakes. This is all going to fail, you know, and I can really catastrophize in my mind and, you know, winding myself up with my thoughts that just aren't real. You know, they're all made up. Um, can really alter my breathing. And so one way of calming my own head down is to focus on the breath and take time out and really stop, put all my tools down and just focus on the one fundamental process that keeps us alive, which is breathing. And I think that's what my guest from episode number one talks about because she really sort of walks away from anything that stresses her out. And I think it's her way of taking a breather, as we say, you know, to really give herself a chance to stand back from it all, from the chaos and take stock. So this from episode one. 
And you have to laugh at yourself at those moments. I haven't had a point where I've totally wanted to throw in the towel, but I've had times where I've had too many moments of feeling a little bit down about something and saying, okay, this is too hard. I can't do this. You have to have some self-preservation. If you feel yourself going through that, you have to walk away from something, but it's time to just step back and say, okay, you know, my frame of mind is really important and I have to take care of myself. And if I feel that I'm challenging myself too much or it's taking on too much you just take a breather i personally believe that's very normal we're all human we have a threshold you know we can't be at the max all the time you know constantly 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 pushing yourself i love the fact that my guest really understands that we as humans are constantly pushing ourselves i think women in stem in particular are really hard workers and they're really sort of going against the grain and the stereotypes and so This guest from episode one really sort of acknowledges that we as women in STEM and maybe even men in STEM work so hard and it is really important to give yourself a break from that. And so she doesn't sort of beat herself up for pushing herself too hard. She says, yeah, you know, we as humans tend to do that, but it's also okay to just stop and take a breather. It's really funny because whenever I record these podcasts, I always go into this like massive yawning fit. I'm literally yawning between things that I say. And it's not because I find it boring, but it's because doing this podcast really allows me to get back into my body. Because I think, you know, so much during my week, I'm a human doing just striking things off my to-do list and I very rarely unless I go into meditation I very rarely actually just stop and allow myself to really be a human being where I'm taking my time to do my tasks I'm really enjoying what I'm doing and I must say that this podcast gives me an opportunity to do that and I think when I start to totally relax And breathe in what I'm doing. Uh, Sorry, just yawned again. Uh, I start to yawn because I think, you know, part of the thing of breathing is actually taking in oxygen. And so is yawning. And um, I have heard somewhere along my life experiences that yawning is a sign of being very relaxed. And uh, the fact that I yawn through this recording of the podcast is a really good sign because it means that um, I'm very relaxed recording it and it is great to be able to uh, really speak from the heart and get real and be really authentic and um, yeah and just be very present with you guys so um, I guess that's uh, a good sign Uh, I'm sorry to all of you that I'm really annoying (laughs) my One of my sisters gets so annoyed um, when I'm yawning away, when I'm talking to her. Probably because she takes it so personally. Um, (laughs) But it really isn't personal. It's actually just a sign of being utterly relaxed in front of the person that um, I'm speaking to, which in this case is you on my machines. Um, But anyway, back to the women in STEM. So... Yeah, walking away from any stress can be an act of just taking some time to breathe and take stock. And I think, you know, when Brené Brown talks about calm people being breathers, I think the absolute learning out of that statement is the fact that people don't, calm people don't get caught up in the moment they are able to actually take some distance from it and taking that distance allows people to really look at the holistic picture and make the best decisions based on that whole picture and you know that's often why it's not good to write an email immediately after being upset or you know um, respond immediately or you know lash back at someone that's 
hurting you or upsetting you in some way but to actually just kind of either walk away or just take some time to decide how you want to respond and I think that's why breathing just allows for a calmer frame of mind because you're taking that time to zoom out essentially and look at everything and not sort of be this firecracker of a reactor um, that's just responding to a tiny part of it, but instead looking at, at it from bird's eye view and saying, okay, what is the best way to to come at this? Um, and, you know, I think that's a really good practice in all situations is to really just allow yourself some time and just say, you know what, I'm going to get back to you on that because... If you're anything like me, like I have so many experiences from my past that can come up in a moment, you know, if someone's screaming at me because my driving wasn't great and we're in a bit of a road rage thing, I, rather than, you know, lash out and scream back at someone or, um, you know, be aggressive, I found that it's much more powerful to just stay calm and just you know, not sort of rise to um, other people's aggression. And I think, you know, taking that time is really essential. And that's what my guest from episode 90 talks about. Learning when to stop and learning that's okay. And stopping isn't a failure. You're allowed to take time for yourself. And also, if you hear something that you don't particularly agree with or I've worked a lot with industry um, during my PhD and I've had a really fantastic experience of that. But there's been a few moments where we've had a few difficult conversations or they've said a few comments which I haven't particularly, uh, you know, taken favourably. And rather than just not snapping or it's almost giving them what they want if you snap or you say a comment back, it's taking a breather, um, as my nana would say, have a sleep on it and then... <laughs> reassessing it in the morning and uh, that's really helped me before as well learning when to stop isn't easy I think you know it sounds great in practice but you know when you're in that moment it can be really hard to stop and take a breather um and but I think that's part of maturing I think it's part of being a grown-up is knowing when to stop Um, I have had the privilege of interviewing some really senior people, people at the top of their game. And I have noticed a trait in all of them, which is that they really know when to stop. And so I might ask them the question that's a bit provoking, but they'll actually stop and take time and take their power back. Whereas for someone like me that isn't so senior, you know, if someone asks me a question, like I blurt out the answer because I just want to like provide an answer. And actually the older I get, the more I'm able to take that time to go, that's a really great question. Let me see, what do I really think about this? And just be really open with the fact that I'm processing stuff. I think it's okay to process. We live in a world where everything has to be so instant and quick, but I think it's okay to take the time you need to process. And That might take longer in the beginning, um, but as time goes on and you become more experienced with knowing who you are and knowing how you respond and knowing where your triggers come from, I think the time you need to process will get shorter and shorter. Um, But I think it's also really empowering to acknowledge that you need time. You know, when people say, I'm going to need to get back to you on that, or let me sleep on it, or, you know, give me a moment just to figure out how I feel about that the fact that you're allowing yourself that time can be so empowering and so respectful to oneself and um, whenever I've been on the receiving end of someone requesting more time I've actually um, really really admired that and uh, yeah I think sometimes we're always having to deliver and that can actually put us in quite a subordinate position where, you know, we're always having to provide and deliver. And and actually, 
very empowered people don't feel like they owe anybody that. What an empowered person might think is actually, I know my mind, I know my capabilities, I know my qualities. And so given that I am the best person to provide an answer for you on that subject, I'm actually going to wait till tomorrow when I can give you the best answer that I have. You know, that kind of like giving yourself that time is like so admirable. Gosh, I'm saying all this and I I definitely need to practice it myself. So I'm going to leave you with the last quote from episode 95 where the person, the guest, the woman from STEM really had and was working with someone who really crushed her spirit and was very condescending, very judgmental, and it couldn't have been pleasant working with someone senior to her that just was so mean. And in taking a step back and taking a breather, she was able to really sort of remind herself of who she is and what she represents. Here's the quote. And it's nice to be working and having a bit of break from schooling, kind of like a version of a postdoc of, I've been in school so long, I didn't know what it was like to breathe and not be in school. Right. So what I see happening is working here for a little bit, for a couple of years, and then figuring out where I want to do my PhD with, who I want to do it with, and finding another good mentor, not just someone who can say face, I've learned that I'm going to ask all other grad students that they've had before how the professor actually is. I think it is so important to breathe, to take that time you need to get back into your body, to not be influenced by other people, but to really know your own mind and to know your own capabilities and your strengths and your weaknesses, to know yourself. And I guess what I'm saying is that breathing and really taking that time to get oxygen into your body, to be alone with yourself, to turn inwards is a chance to really know yourself and to take back your power and to act and respond or react in a way that is from your position of power. And breathing is one way of getting yourself back there. So take some time to notice your breath. I think it, you know, is often a real indication of how calm you are inside, how stressed you might be if your breath is kind of short and sharp and 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 taking that time to really know how you're doing I think is a very empowering tool certainly from all the women in STEM that were on this show it seems like breathing has really provided them with an opportunity to come from a very strong and empowered place and I hope it does for you too thank you so much for listening this week please do subscribe to this podcast and maybe even rate and review it if you can i'd love to have your feedback about this episode or any others that you've listened to and maybe some suggestions for future topics for this show it's all about self-discovery and evolution on innovation so be kind and loving to yourselves and i wish you all a great week <laughs>